hopefully starting. Um, there we go. Yep, you're good. <laughs> um, so we are here at Lorena Coffee House, our wonderful, um, our wonderful neighbor across the street from the Rocky Mount campus, and we thought um, we've got a, a really fascinating project we want to talk to you about. Um, can everybody hear us okay? Thumbs up if you can. Um, excellent. I'll get out of the shadows. <laughs> um, with me here, um, I have got um, Lerma Coffee owner Kevin McLaughlin Hello. and Photographer Eric Brown. Hi. And I think most everybody knows me. <laughs> um, so the um, I hope we're gonna have it so all the guys so the guys can be seen. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, leave it to the photographer to uh, get this set straight. So. Uh, So here we are, um, and <laughs> getting, our angle, getting our camera angle just right. Um, so the, the, um, the project that we have, um, I do have a, um, I do have a, a Google slide presentation that I'll show you, but um, I wanted to take some time to just um, talk to these two before I really show you the, um, some of the amazing um, results of the project. Um, so for, for, for those who don't know, the project one is called uh, Faces of the Community, Uncovered and Rediscovered. And I'm leaving my mask hanging on my ear on purpose right now. Um, where we are sitting right now, where the, the wonderful thing happens, is there gonna be more of it you guys? <laughs> okay. Okay. How many pictures did you end up taking here? I only have 33 subjects to work. 33 subjects. Um, and how many have you shown so far? Maybe a third of those. And we'll um we'll show you some of them, as I had said. Um, they're all they're all things that um you can see on the Roma's Facebook page. Um, they do it Monday, they do it Mondays and Thursdays. So there's a new one today. I'm not plugging to get you to go look at it, but there's a new one out there today. <laughs> the, um, so what we did, actually did it, and what we did was um, we sat right here on this stage where we are sitting, and we were socially distanced. Um, Eric and I were, and he took a picture with the, the mask. We talked a little bit, and then he took a picture without the mask. And um, the, the thing that I really kind of wanted to know, um, how did the collaboration come about? Um, well, you know, I've been thinking all throughout COVID, how can we as a coffee house continue to be a connecting point for the community, um, recognizing that COVID has had an isolating effect on people. And the whole point of Lorema is to be a coming together point. So, you know, it was hard on us to you know, continue to, to do that because coming together and gathering became potentially dangerous and harmful. So, you know, for months I was just thinking through how do we that we do that and I had this idea um, because the, the coming and going through the coffee house and seeing each other and even just sharing a smile I think that's something very important just to know that we're seen and you know, valued as members of the community um, and I had this sort of vague idea for a photo just of someone's face you know with the, with the mask in there and out and the idea didn't materialize until Eric happened to move back to Rocky Mount where he grew up. He had been away in Nashville for years doing photography. 
COVID brought him home and the, the project, I mean, it, it was just the alignment was there when, when I saw Eric came like, oh, okay, this is, this is the guy for the job. And, and you know, then it took on a whole new level, a whole new life. So, Eric, what are some of the most uh, moving stories? Mm. Uh, I think most, most of what struck me most was uh, friends and teachers, people working in education, um, who had so much to complain about, but instead of complaining, spoke of the resiliency of the community, of their students, of the students' families. Um, yeah, left to my own devices, I've been able to everything. And to hear folks who had so much hard work last year, not using the microphone to delegate. To speak of things they had noticed in their community. That was really encouraging. What were some of the things that students noticed that you Published the stories that you heard the stories. I mean, I was surprised that people showed up. It's a really, it's a, it's a vulnerable ask to say, "Hey, can you come out here and talk about what's hurt over the last year, or so maybe what's not, what you want?" Well, to sit down with the stranger, and just share that stuff. You know, we all have stories, and we didn't hold up having to share much of anything. Anybody at that time. Um, yeah, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised by people to come out. And come out. Yeah, similarly, I was um, surprised and moved by it. Like, once you open the big floor or you know, create space for people to share just how far that went, you know, I thought it was going to be maybe a lot more great what people might share. like. Yes, COVID's been hard for me and my family and parents' why, but it wasn't like that. It was the, you know, the range of what people shared and the depth of it. It was just like we, we've been sort of like bubbling up and, and haven't had enough outlets to, to communicate with people that genuinely care about us and want to hear what we do and what we do and what we have to say. Um, so I, I was really impressed by all that shared and um, excited to continue rolling that out. Because yeah, it creates so much common ground with all the things being you know together in a sense, but not not together physically. So, you know, here you just said you were just kind of surprised that people showed up. Were you? Um, I I think yeah, I think more people showed up than maybe I would have guessed, um, which I'm delighted with. I think yeah. Didn't know exactly what to expect. So, um, trying to balance out my questions here. Um, touch on, on, on something that you know, just for a minute. Um, being, being here, um, having the space, um, it was six months, right? Six months after you opened. Um, I know it was. I know it was hard. It's hard enough for the first year of the business, but um, how did how did the pandemic change everything that that had been kind of set in those six months? Well, um, you know, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but with the whole point of Lorama to be a place of coming together for people. Um, for that to suddenly be dangerous, that you know, really messed with me. Like it, you know, it's like, wow, how do I, how do I keep doing this, bringing people together, being of service to the community, and yet we can't really welcome people to share space, you know. So um, it, it was just quickly, you know, it became this thing of when times get hard. Uh, Look in the mirror and you say, "What are we about?" And that's that's serving the community. So I, I didn't close the business whatsoever. We just, you know, quickly retooled. We we you know made it so folks couldn't sit inside. And, 
Um, and then we set up a walk-up counter at the front door and made it more of a grab-and-go coffee shop, um, like a walk-up window, and you know, set up a way for people to sponsor um, deliveries of coffee and pastries to healthcare workers and other frontline um, employees around town, and you know, just partner with other small businesses in Rocky Mountain to be doing events and, and serving the community, you know, just however we could. So it, it and I'll say I, it, it rocked me how the community showed up for us, you know, after only being open six months, um, it, it felt as though we can make it through this because the community has our back. You know, we showed them that we're about serving the community and showing up for everyone and creating space for everyone. And, and then when you know, we needed support in return, uh, I felt met there. And, and that was beautiful and I'll always be grateful. It strikes me upon all, you didn't have to let anybody go. Nope. And that's that's the wonderful thing that I think. Um, I know that um, the virtual tips are still going, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so we, um, so we've worked you know, six months with a new business. Now, how long have you been back in Mount Thanksgiving. Huh? I moved back for Thanksgiving. Twenty or twenty? Twenty twenty. Okay. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Life was going great there. I was working in entertainment, entertainment photography. And that industry got steamrolled last year. So we had to make some some adjustments. Came back home. Came back home. What kind of pictures have you been taking since you've been mm. back here, or has it still been kind of the traveling back? I've been like, that's, most of what I'm doing for work is traveling about the time. Yeah, I'm trying to, to build a sustainable supplement. So, how did, how did your family adapt to having been in Nashville and now they're? Well, no, in a couple of years. <laughs> We're doing good. We're, I will say, uh, having Raymond here, the community that's built around that, has really given us so many. Um, the neighbors are great, and loving, just right around the corner. Um, and as things have warmed up, we're getting out in guards and meeting our neighbors. And, We're finding our way forward, you know? Yeah. We're, doing We're glad you're back in Rockdale. <laughs> I'll share with when, so I only had really met Eric one time, I think once, maybe October, like a month or so after we opened, and he came in um, with his family from here and just asked us if he could take some photos just for fun. And I didn't know him you know, at all. He just said, hey, nice to meet you. Um, Lucas and I stepped outside and we got a photo outside and I, I was just really moved at the way Eric captured the motion. Like I looked at the photo of my face and you know, my hair's all messy and I'm deeply exhausted and yet like more fulfilled than I, I'd ever seen myself. The amount of emotion I saw in my face, I, I was like, okay, that's my new Facebook profile. It just captured like the essence of what I was going through. Um, it just really moved me. And then that, you know, that was it. Like I didn't see or talk to Eric for, you know, more than a year thereafter. And then he comes back. And as soon as I saw him, I was like, we should talk about collaborating. And I didn't have any idea of what that looked like. But then this, you know, like I mentioned, this this photo with the mask on and off kind of came to my mind again. And, and then I was like, oh, yeah, okay, let's do it. And then we talked and it was just like, to be from there. So, Eric, you, you kind of mentioned as well that um, you had to fly, you had to travel a lot for your profession. Um, is that really the, the the main way the pandemic changed it? Or as they do. Um, I guess before the pandemic, you could 
take pictures sometimes so you don't touch places very close up to people how did they how did they feel about that after the pandemic I mean, it's still a thing that the entertainment industry, live music, not when people aren't touring, that affects album cycles. And so that affects production and packaging of albums. Um, so it was just, it was a domino effect of it. No, not. And even what I'm doing now, when I travel, it's, I think I've done one music project since I've been here. But it's been uh, commercial stuff, art stuff, a couple of event things that are starting to come out online. But yeah, it's all different. It's all very different. Same industry is still far from So let's see some of those pictures. <laughs> this is going to take me getting out bugs. And I might be, um, I'm having to call up a, a presentation that I, um, that I did. So you get a lovely close up of my mask. <laughs> and um, Kevin, you may want to just see it. <laughs> um, I love it that I can order him around. <laughs> Come into his coffee house and say, here. Um, so the, um, the pictures, for those who may not have seen it, they're, um, they, they feature, like I said, Mondays and Thursdays on, um, on Facebook and um, Instagram as well. And then I think you get a tweet that says, I just posted a picture to Instagram. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I noticed. Um, so if you guys aren't following Lorema on, on Facebook, you should, um, <laughs> the, um, so the, some of the pictures, I, I, I didn't show all of them, but I did show, um, I did pick some and, um, like I said, I'm calling this back up. Um, so let's see if my little trick will, um, Will work just as well as I said my advice before. Um, yes, it will. <laughs> um, so the um, I'm skipping ahead. Um, here are some of the pictures. Um, I will make it bigger <laughs> um, to um, to present. The pictures. Um, it may take a second for them to load. Um, guys, this is what they're seeing. Um, and what I put in there, um, I know it's very tiny. We can't see you right now, but we know you're there. Um, <laughs> the, um, I put the stories that were there um, with um, what each person said to Eric, what it was, what was shown on, um, on the page. Um, so I will ask, do y'all remember anything about Sherry's story? Or should I just skim through it and share it? You can, yeah, skim through and share okay. it. Okay. The stories were great. The stories were great. There's a lot to go through. Yes. Um, so you get to, you might see another lovely shot of me. Um, Sherry said, working from home has allowed me to be there for my son um, to help him navigate as he's adapting to virtual learning. He finished third grade last year, and now all of fourth grade has been at home. Um, because I'm working from home, too, I'm able to do all of that with him. Um, that's been good, and that's been bad. I'm not a teacher, so there have been struggles. Uh, Sherry said she did have COVID. Um, and going through the two weeks at home by herself was one of, was her low point. Um, and she did have a mild case. Um, but there's still a concern of wondering what could happen six months from now. Um, that added to the anxiety that I was already feeling, she said. Um, I'd already been feeling that way when going out and being around people. I was already anxious and that just pushed me even more. Um, she she speaks about some of the groups that that were um, 
that we're helping to make sure um, that um, a lot of needs were met. Um, she said, I've loved seeing community come together, keeping the focus that community is important, not walking away when we're struggling or getting caught up with looking at the internal. It's about the we, not me. And we see there's a picture of Sherry with her mask on and with her mask off. And then we see Camden. <laughs> um, and Camden said, there's been death and loss around me. Um, losing someone during the pandemic and not really having the proper way to grieve due to necessary restrictions, just like we had said in an earlier um, session, has been hard. You don't realize what all is lost when you don't do the same things you normally would to process the grief. Um, I've seen a lot more neighbors helping neighbors during these times. It's been a lot of simple things like giving our neighbors some toilet paper at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, it was one of those things that you didn't realize would, would, be, in, would be in short supply. Um, knowing that we're all in the same boat, I'm seeing people being nicer and helping one another a bit more. Um, Camden said, I'm ready to travel. I'm ready to reconnect with my family that I haven't seen during this pandemic. Um, during the beginning stages of this, my parents seemed so distant. We didn't want to risk anything because of my dad's underlying health issues. They've had to learn more technology than they ever wanted to, like Mr. Michael Jordan. <laughs> I'm not so, I'm so ready to see them and spend time together. Um, Seth said um, that his game has been having more space, more time to focus on the things that matter, um, like close relationships and family. Um, I feel the world slowed down and that opened up space for things that were always within my reach, but that I never really reached for, he said. Um, I've gained a deeper awareness of death, that we're on a singular path toward that end point. Um, he talked about his parents. Um, they live in the Midwest, so he's hoping he can have them here more often. Um, he said, I've been blown away by the different small business owners in the community. Um, they're donating things to healthcare workers or donating food to those in need. I've seen churches and people doing food drives. Um, I keep hearing stories of these little silver linings, good things happening. Uh, then, Elaine, I think her, because she said, I'm 60, and I want to live my best life. Um, she talked about, I think about wearing this mask, and I think about when all this came into being. It lifted the veil on what people actually are like. Um, it showed us who we are as Americans, who we are as a community, and who we are as family. We're still seeing it. When I see people wearing a mask, it says to me that you care about yourself, but you also care about me too. Don't wear a mask. Um, what you're saying to me is, I don't care about you. It's my freedom. I get frustrated sometimes when people talk about my freedom. And this is what you're talking about. This freedom that you're talking about, the freedom that people are dying for, what do you think their definition of freedom is? Um, I found a bit of hope these past couple of months. The vaccine makes me hopeful, but we can't sit back. Um, she, she had just moved there, moved from Arkansas um, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, she said, right when we arrived, everything was um, shut down. So we lived in a hotel for almost three months. People weren't showing houses. Everything was closed down. Um, it was very uncomfortable for people to continue with normal things at that time. So we were stuck in between for a while, but we got past it. Um, she said that um, it's so weird that even now, after almost a year, um, what the new normal is. I think all of us are so ready to get back out and see people again. Um, to not be so separated from one another and our daily lives, our day-to-day -day lives. Um, coming out here right when everything closed down, I don't really know what NC was like before I got here. In my mind, I'm set up to believe that this is how North Carolina is. 
and that people are just disconnected from one another. But I know that is not true. One thing I've found is even with small interactions with people who've lived in this community for a long time, everyone is very hospitable. It's offered me a glimpse into what this community can be like without a pandemic. It's hard, but we're all doing what we can. Um, Ryan, um, he's the, I think he's the next to last one that I had, um, that I had featured here. <laughs> um, Ryan said, honestly, what I miss the most is face-to-face -face interaction. I'm a guy who makes connections through talking, and it's that energy that fuels me. I want to breathe the same air because that's what it's about with me. That's how I connect with people. My, my biggest loss of this past year has been have, has been having that connection to go places and meet to meet others. I've learned so much, though. This pandemic has sat me down and given me so much time to do more things and focus more. I've seen our community becoming stronger because of this pandemic. I've seen a lot of people coming together. Um, people that were separated have come to, together to help each other. Entrepreneurs trying to grow, but then the pandemic put us all in a stuck place. And now as we're all trying to figure out our way through, it has forced us into collaboration. That part has been a win for everyone. People you never would have imagined would have connected. They have. So, Yoana, um, I'm looking to see if y'all remember these pictures. <laughs> um, Yoani said, I'm trying to stay positive, but not being around my family has really taken a toll. I'm a family person, um, and I haven't been able to see them much. They live here, but we really have to keep our distance. When it's in our nature to be social people, and then you take that away, it's a challenge. But I got married last January, and we got to spend a lot more time together than the average newlywed would get. That's really been a positive. There's a scripture, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, it says, anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word cheers it up. So remember to stay positive and remember that there is a future for us. It's a good future, but we just have to be patient. I, I think I fibbed. I said what, that was the last one. Um, then John, who has performed on this stage and... Um, he says, with having such a young daughter, Millie, who runs around here eating string cheese, <laughs> um, who was waving at people um, a lot as the, um, as even as, even with social distancing, Millie was still making friends. Um, John said, with having such a young daughter, I'm okay with being at home more, and especially at her age, being able to spend um, a year being with her and spend time together has been good. But I feel like there's always this COVID radar going on in our minds. I'm constantly wondering what is appropriate for me or to do or not to do. Can I sit here? Can I do that? Do I need to be wearing a mask right now? How far is this person sitting from me? Um, is this place open? Can I dine in? There's all this stuff that we're trying to weigh and figure out constantly and I'm really looking forward to not having to process that stuff anymore. I feel like it's even starting to creep into movies I watch. I watch a movie and I keep thinking, they can't do that. What they're actually doing is normal. Um, this isn't normal. What we're doing isn't normal. I'm really curious to see if there is a residual change in people after this is all, after this is over. And then this is a picture of uh, what it looked like to be um, sitting here um, having this having this conversation with Eric. Um, we were both, you know, to, to frame where we are, this table that, that we're sitting at now is the one that's kind of behind here, kind of behind um, Eric in the picture. Um, but I said I wanted us all to be at a table together. Um, I was a lucky, a lucky young lady there for a few minutes. I was between Eric and Kevin. <laughs> um, but we, you, 
Eric came and set up this whole big thing and took up the, the whole stage and took some time to talk. Um, and I put up there to see more. Um, you can follow Lorema on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, the new photos are revealed every Monday and Thursday. Um, out of modesty, I will just say, if you want to see today's, just go on Facebook and look at it yourself. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm just going to say, go see it. Um, and you can check out Eric's website, um, ericbrownphoto.com. Um, and you're on Instagram, right? Yeah. Yes. And um, Eric does have a store. <laughs> um, I'll show you Eric's website very quickly because um, I want them to talk some more. Um, so um, I will share that tab. Um, hopefully you're seeing just some of the, the pictures that are coming up. Um, hey, Lucas. <laughs> um, and you can go through and see all the different um, music portraits and um, projects that, that Eric has worked on. Um, as I said, there's a store. <laughs> um, so remember, <laughs> being a photographer has been very hard these days. Um, so, um, and if you want, if you want to find Lorema, like I said, you can go on in, on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, LoremaCoffee.com, LoremaCoffee.com, Square Site. Um, <laughs> so, um, I think Kevin will probably tell you I very much use that Square Site. Um, <laughs> I'm not ashamed to do it. Um, so I want to hear some more from you guys. Um, I know it only looks like, um, like Eric's in the picture now, but I'm going to sneak back in, Kevin, the gentleman who scooted back. Um, and I think we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, I have a question that, that I had saved from the from a previous session that, um, I don't want you to feel for me, Kevin. Um, name some of the effects that have impacted small businesses. I know it's very important. Um, yeah. Um, well, it's you're already operating on such slim margins, especially in food and beverage. You know, so we make just a little bit on each cup of coffee sold and it's such a volume game, you know, and being that we were only open six months before COVID started, it's, you know, you're already running on debt and um, yeah, it's just been difficult you know, to keep things going. So, you know, we've had to get very creative and, you know, just really constantly looking to be out in the community and, and just do more to, you know, be of service and um, make sales and keep things going. Um, you know, we, we have had to, you know, take on some more debt, unfortunately, but that's part of the, part of the deal. And, um, looking forward to busier days for sure. Um, you know, for personally, what I miss most is just having events here and, and you know, letting people come together and doing so in a way that we don't have to, to be so concerned about people too close or is that person wearing a mask or, you know, this or that. And, and so I'm really looking forward to that, you know, like open mic night, we had monthly, that is my personal favorite and very much to being able to do events like that once again. So, as Kevin said, he had open mic night and musical acts on the stage out in the parking lot there, um, the Bromby Square parking lot. Um, and he put more seating out today. Plenty of seats, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Don't steal my table, though. <laughs> um, so, 
Eric, you're just getting back from a trip. How was traveling? Uh, much safer than I thought it was going to be. I was uh, getting anxious with all things COVID. And uh, yeah, I was I was concerned that the anxiety was going to be over there. Uh, um, but for the first time in a year, I flew this week. And how do you feel incredibly safe? Yeah, I was pleased to see everyone cooperating with what's been asked. I felt comfortable and safe. See, we all need some care. Hopefully, everybody sees everything. Um, see this wonderful backdrop behind us. Um, I know people might have been tired of seeing me in my office. Um, it, because the computer, because my laptop's kind of across from me, um, I wanted to give some time if anybody um, who's watching has uh, wants to ask a question, either one of these two, uh, then I or, or or just to comment. Um, I'm not, I can't really see the um, the chat box, <laughs> but um, you know, pitch in or or raise your hand or something. Um, so someone wants to join the call. <laughs> um, getting my exercise. This is good. <laughs> um, <laughs> let them in. Um, so we're looking forward to more folks kind of being uh, being in here, being. Um, enjoying this wonderful, um, enjoying this wonderful space. Um, and we, we highly encourage you to come enjoy this wonderful, this wonderful space. Um, so I will ask this. Um, what? What do you miss most about how it was before the pandemic? Mm. You may have said that already. <laughs> yeah, I think just the freedom to, to gather uh, freely and completely indoors and unmasked and with whomever, whenever, especially moving here to a town and like uh, mills are so important as you're making friendships and uh, yeah, I am so ready to be able to open the doors and have them feel safe. Yeah. Well, I Same. <laughs> and you know our, our business model is very collaborative. So, you know, anybody that wants to partner up and do something, I'm always for it. And it, it was just, it's been difficult to have to say no or to have to say yes, but we're going to have to do it this way just, you know, for, for safety. I totally agree. Um, and, you know, I just look forward to not having to have all these added layers of, of concern. Yeah, it's a huge responsibility to hold space for people and make sure that it's safe. Um, so, yeah, I just look forward to being able to you know, have more freedom and flexibility to welcome people to, to gather and just continue to do more collaboration. You know, if you look up and down our menu, it's all it's all partnerships with local bakers or with farmers and bakers. And, um, just look forward to being able to say yes to you know, whoever emails me and has an idea for a partnership or a project. There are just so many great people and organizations here in town and you know, performers and photographers and people that have all these amazing skills. And I just love that we can be a platform for that. And I look forward to doing that. <laughs> We have really enjoyed having Eric with us today. <laughs> uh, 
So, um, I know the, the thing I think that a lot of us are looking forward to uh, as this pandemic hopefully is coming to close to an end is uh, it's just what you guys are saying, you know, getting out and just having a place to, to come together. Just um, John mentioned being exhausted with that question of can I do this? I'm so ready for that to just be non dominant every day. Every day is dominant as well. So excited for that to go. Yeah. Do you, Kevin, do you get do you ever get worried about um, when like a a customer might come in and they're not they're not wearing the mask or they're because I know I've walked in a few times without my mask and just turned around and walked out without the mask. Uh, have you have you had anything that that maybe worry you that people just weren't taking it very seriously? Um, yes, it's been a challenge. You know, I can say I'm thankful that maybe ninety ninety or ninety five percent of people are totally fine with the requirement to just wear a mask as you're moving about the space. You know, of course, when you're just seated and eating and drinking a bit, but we have uh, right when you walk in the door a table with masks. What are we talking about again? You know, have one, you know, no charge, no problem. Just we ask that you wear it, you know, just for to keep yourself safe and to keep everyone in the house safe. And, you know, for the most part, people have been very uh, able to that. But, but yeah, it's, you know, it's been a challenge at times. And, um, I just tell people with you know with respect that this is this is kind of the rules of, of the house and obviously it's the state law so you know if we just do this I think we can move beyond COVID you know quicker and safer and so so yeah that's it's been that's been definitely difficult but but I'm happy that, that most people are, are you know really understanding and board with, with keeping each other safe you know I didn't want it to be like these are my rules do this it's it's more of like hey let's just keep each other safe you know let's let's make it a thing that we're on the same team just trying to get beyond this so we don't have to put this in our face so it's it's 444 um last question for Eric and then uh, we get our our parting remarks for the day um eric what's what, what's coming up that, that we might see from you um hopefully other steps to what we've already done with this project we're working to see where we can take it from here okay we're, we're taking it some place <laughs> <laughs> we're just not you just have to watch out for that yeah keep a watch out we're so we're working on something so we're just, um, I think we're just going to shut it. We're, we're going to call it a day. Um, okay, bye. <laughs> uh, I think we need to, uh, uh, one more time. Uh, and um, just wanted to say thank you so much, Kevin, for allowing us to do the last thank you honey <laughs> <laughs> for doing the last session um from here and um to just for just you guys being, have a great summer okay honey for just be we just want to thank you for being a really good neighbor to um Edgecombe Community College and um I think we will um, we'll turn it over to um, interim vice president um, Bruce Panathan. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Bruce Panathan. I'm the interim vice president of instruction and the dean of health sciences and public safety here at Edgecombe Community College. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank Carol and the Diversity and Global Connections Committee for putting this together. I want to thank our forum facilitators and the panelists 
for their expertise and for their willingness to share their experiences and their vulnerabilities, as well as their hopes. And I'd like to thank our attendees uh, for their attentiveness and thought provoking questions and dialogue. Um, something that I was, I didn't prepare anything because um, I was hoping I'd be inspired by something as we went through all of this. And uh, one of the things that uh, Mr. Michael Jordan had mentioned was, you know, we really haven't had a chance to, to talk about this. You know, we really haven't had a chance to kind of debrief or decompress and um, be able to kind of reflect on everything because most of us have been, you know, just trying to, to, to dodge the balls as they're flying at us, you know, for the last 14 or 15 months. And um, hearing, be, being involved in, in listening in on these, you know, you hear that, you know, the, the problems you're dealing with aren't unique. Um, you know, there are a lot of other people that are dealing with those struggles, but we also hear that there are a lot of people that are um, working hard and working together trying to make things happen. Um, I'm a I'm a dad. I've got a child in um, in high school. I've got a six year old in kindergarten with an IEP that needs speech therapy and virtual speech therapy with a kindergartner is a nightmare. Um, I have I have two dogs at home that we got during the pandemic that had no idea what it's like to be home by themselves. Um, so there are a lot of things kind of to, to think about as we move forward. I'm, I'm taking classes, um, working towards my doctorate. So I'm dealing with those struggles as a, as an instructor, as an administrator, as a student, I see all those things. And in hearing everyone talk, you realize that, you know, your struggles aren't, uh, you're not the only one dealing with those struggles. But what I also hear when we talk about this is a lot of the things that I've, that I perceive as struggles, you know, I've, I've, I've been blessed to have it relatively easy when you compare it to the struggles that a lot of others have had. And part of that is from strong family support, uh, strong support at work, um, and a lot of other things. And, and I just really appreciate everybody's willingness to, to participate in today's events and be here. Um, thank you, Carol, so very much. Um, and, and everyone else who has helped to uh, make this happen. And I hope everyone has an absolutely wonderful day and, and stay safe. Thank you. Well, that was just in time. Oh. Carol, you're silent. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Google has been doing some crazy, crazy stuff today. Um, so thank you so much to um, trying to get the light good. Um, thank you so much to everyone who has um, made this um, symposium such a great success. Um, we hope we can be face to face next year. Um, so um, just remember that Global Ed wants you to um, think globally and act locally. Um, Dr. McLeod, do you have any parting remarks or are you? Well, um, I, I, I heard a lot. I learned a lot. I really appreciate the, uh, the effort and the thoughts that were shared. And uh, I, I think it was a, uh, Certainly food for our souls. I uh, really appreciate it. And even the young people who joined us uh, seem like they stayed on for most of the duration. So hopefully uh, they will benefit from it either now or into the future. So um, we appreciate them anyway. So thank you. And thank you again for asking me. Thank you again for everybody who participated. So thank you so very much, everybody. This ends the 2021 Global Education Virtual Symposium. Thank you so much. Great job all.